So my goal for today is to get this engine running. It's last ran in a Herald estate that we had that was scrapped in 1991. That's 26 years this car, this engine has been sat in the back of a barn. Um, today I'm going to try to start it. So I've had the starter motor here attached for a little while with the cabling and the starter solenoid and using that I've been able to spin the engine over no spark plugs um, so I know it's not seized uh, and I know it generates oil pressure the compressions are not as great as they could be I've got a fuel pump fitted and run the fuel line round and I've connected up the carburetors I haven't quite finished the fuel pump so fuel piping so let's uh, do that so I've got a bit of ordinary quarter inch bore rubber hose fuel hose just trim off the right length that I need the uh, Stanley knife not as sharp as it might be let's check it's the right length yep okay Hose clips at both ends. This hose doesn't quite want to go on there. Slacken the clip a bit more and see if that's. When fitting fuel hoses like this, there is a danger of getting shards of rubber cut off the. There we go. That's now uh, inside on. by the ends of the bits of pipe. So you don't want to use too much force, but uh, sometimes it does require a bit. Okay, the fuel tank isn't fitted at the moment, so I've just got a rubber hose from the inlet of the inline filter in the boot to a one gallon can. I've connected the fuel pump's negative to a spare hole in there. And that's a quarter inch UNF threaded hole, so obviously it's intended for something to be bolted to it. Not quite sure what. Now, just need to find a bit of wire to connect from there to there. And there we go. Now it's gone quiet because it has filled the carbs. However, if we take a close look there. Slight bit of weepage on there. I may need to put some extra clips on. So now I need to fit a coil. It'll do the job fine. to wire up from the negative side of the so I've lined the engine up for roughly 10 degrees before uh, I think that's a number four that looks it so I'm now just going to this light here on the dashboard not on the battery, rather, to light up. Yeah, okay, so the light's not working. So I've taken the distributor off the car and I've dug out my box of electrical bits and I've found that I have four sets of points and they're all different. Just need to work out which is the one that's correct for this distributor. And it looks like that one. 
Yeah, these must be a later Lucas. That's a Delco. That's the one. The points are held in by a slot head screw, which needs to be undone. It's usually a little tight. And of course before they can come off, take your road arm off as well. You also need to remove the connection to the doing. condenser and coil. Which is held on by a nut with a tea hat plastic washer for insulation. Seems to be stuck. Ah, there we go. And then the points just lift out. At this point, check the condition of everything. Yeah, as I said, that that looks marginal. That flexible wire for the coil connection point, isn't in the best of conditions on this distributor, but it's okay. At least for today. Swap the condenser as well. That looks like the one. The bolt that holds the condenser in is awkward. And then the condenser terminal and the coil wire and then the plastic insulator washer onto that stub and then the nut to hold it on. Arrange it all to be well clear of everything before tightening it. I just need to set the points gap. And then to set the points gap there's a couple of notches that a screwdriver fits in to adjust the position of the points. Set it on the cam so that it's a maximum opening. And then a feeler gauge. And just a little bit of jiggling up and down helps you to assess whether the feeler gauge is being pinched by the points, which is the position that you want. And finally, just tighten the clamp. Okay. So now I have a little telltale light there connected to the distributor and I've got the engine lined up at uh, about 10 degrees before so now I just need to adjust this until the light just goes out. Now I've made up a ultra minimalist wiring loom, which is the ignition switch. That's the accessory which I don't really need. Battery, ignition and starter. So I'll connect that. So next to time to fit some spark plugs. Nice new set of BP5E. NGK is not always the best actually on these older engines.
usually dress use just have a little pipe there which goes straight into the constant depression chamber it's supposed to be piped up to there uh, for the time being I can't be bothered to faff around with that I'm just going to put a bung over it so I've tied the choke on let's give it a go mm, not much life there Do a quick spark test. That's a bit of a wide gap. Okay. Well, there wasn't much life from that, so I'm going to replace the coil, the distributor cap, everything else that I haven't done yet. So I fitted a uh, new dizzy cap leads. There's a new rotor arm in there as well. New coil, um, which has a different sort of terminal on it, so I've replaced the tension wire as well. And I've positioned it at TDC number one and confirmed that the valves on number four uh, are open just as you approach that. So that is definitely number one firing on, on uh, that the engine is sitting at. So I haven't got the distributor 180 out. All the ignition parts are new. I guess it's time to give it another try. Looks like something's got rather hot over there. Although, to be perfectly honest, the steam or smoke or whatever it was looked as if it was coming off that exhaust wrap. It was revving quite fast. Um, and there's no coolant in it and there's no water pump uh, the rear choke is sticky so that one needs to be sorted out but all in all I think that was quite a success